I'm Daniel Brooksbank, delighted to be here with Kareen Smith Iannaccio, Chief Governance and Compliance Officer at Norgas Bank Investment Management. Hi, Kareen, great to speak with you. Hi, Daniel, great to speak with you too. Thank you so much for being with us. And my first question is around active ownership and stewardship. In your view, is it possible to quantify stewardship and active ownership and its impact on returns? Yeah, we are an active owner and we truly believe that our active ownership activities support the objective of the fund, which, which is to achieve the highest possible return at moderate risk. And many firms have a single mission to create return like us. So yes, I do think it's the right way to think about it. But we are a long-term fund for the benefit of future generations. And long-term return is clearly dependent on sustainable growth, well-functioning markets, and good corporate governance. And that is at the heart of our stewardship activities. We use our voting rights to safeguard the fund's long-term value, and we raise ESG issues in our company dialogues that are relevant to the fund's long-term return. But having said that, it is, of course, challenging to quantify active ownership and its impact on returns. Maybe we'll get better methods in the future as company reporting improves and we have better data and technology. But in the meantime, lack of direct measures should not stop good and important stewardship work. The fund, as I understand it, owns over 9,000 companies or stakes in over 9,000 companies, has many thousands of meetings with companies every year. And I have a very simple question. What is the point of all those meetings and how do you tie them into investment performance? Yes, as one of the largest shield in the world, we have very good access to company boards and using this access and meeting companies is an essential part of our investment process. And, and we use these meetings to deepen our <coughs> understanding of companies and to develop long-term relationships with company management. But we also use them to discuss and convey our expectations on key sustainability and governance issues. And we share information internally from these meetings and make sure that it is considered in investment decisions. As a result of this integrated approach, company meetings are very often held by portfolio managers together with our governance and sustainability specialists. And our portfolio managers actually attended 96% of our governance meetings in 2020. I'm interested in the benefits and limitations of engagement. Would you agree that divestment can be a somewhat a blunt instrument? Engagement is one of the most effective tools we have as an owner. It allows us to convey our views, as I said, and influence companies. But it also allows us to learn from our investee companies. Information flows both ways. As an example, in our engagement on climate change, we gain insight into companies' preparedness to manage the climate-related risks and opportunities required in the low-carbon transitions. But there are limits to engagements. Some companies expose the funds to risk we deem unacceptable. And as you may know, the Norwegian Minister of Finance has issued ethically motivated guidelines for the exclusion of companies. The fund should not be invested in companies that produce certain products or whose conduct contributes to violations of fundamental ethical norms. And in addition to the exclusions, uh, we divest from companies that impose substantial costs on other companies and on society as a whole, or whose business model will probably not be sustainable in the longer term. But although we then exclude some companies and sell down certain companies, our main goal is to be an owner, an owner that contributes to sustainable return for the companies we have in our portfolio. Thank you so much. Uh, I think around initiatives like the, the PRI and Climate Action 100 plus uh, initiatives, they stress investor collaboration, but my impression, and it is just my impression, that uh, Norgas Bank, it seems relatively absent from these uh, coalitions. Is that impression correct? I mean, we are actually a founding PRI signatory and we actively engage with the PRI to develop responsible investment further, sharing best practices and fostering investor collaboration. While we are not a member of Climate Action 100 Plus, we joined other investor groups active in the climate space, such as the Institutional Investor Group on Climate Change, 
the Transition Pathway Initiatives and UNEP-FI. And collaboration with other investors across asset classes are, I mean, it's very useful. However, we in general don't engage in investor collaboration aimed at formulating a coordinated message towards single companies. That is right. We have our own expectations and priorities, and these may at times be slightly different. But having said that, we follow all investor initiatives closely and often align our messages with them. And, and we are actually very impressed with the work done by Climate Action 100 Plus. There's a lot of talk at the moment around stakeholder capitalism. Um, what does this mean for investors? So given our long investment horizon, we want boards to understand the broader environmental and social consequences of company operations and consider the interest of relevant stakeholders. But I actually believe this debate around stakeholder capitalism may present a somewhat misleading conflict with shareholders on one side and stakeholders on the other side. I mean, companies need to balance a variety of interests, but shareholders' interests can often be aligned with other stakeholders who share our long-term orientation. And I'm not too concerned whether this approach is called stakeholder capitalism or not. My concern is to see that companies consider their relevant stakeholders and act accordingly. The other big topic really at the moment is uh, net zero. A lot of announcements from pension funds recently aiming for net zero. What's the role for active ownership in achieving net zero? I mean, active ownership is a key tool that investors can use to hold boards accountable and positively influence companies. And we have defined a set of expectations of companies across priority sustainability areas, including climate change. For example, we expect companies to describe how their long-term business strategy and climate targets consider the goals of the Paris Agreement. And as part of our company engagement, we ask companies how they are preparing for a low carbon transition. We ask those companies that have not set ambitious climate targets to do so and to publish a climate plan outlining how they will reach the targets. And another way we can encourage companies to take action is through our voting at companies' AGMs. For example, by supporting proposals that are in line with our voting guidelines on climate change expectations. So the bottom line is that we have a long-term investment horizon and an interest in supporting companies through the climate transitions. And I believe active ownership from us and others has an important role to play in this. Final question, you mentioned the, the long term. Um, how do you identify and then allocate to long-term opportunities? I mean, that is a very good and relevant question. I mean, we are here to invest the savings for future generation and our time horizon alone require us to consider long term opportunities and risk. And, and, and we believe that environmental and social externalities that play out over longer time periods are often not sufficiently priced by the market. So, so in the area where we see long-term investment opportunities are companies that enable more environmentally friendly activity and the transition to a low carbon economy. And we have a dedicated environmental mandate. And actually at the end of last year, we had 100 billion Norwegian kroner invested in shares in 90 companies under this mandate. And we're actually very pleased to see that the return of this mandate last year was 34.3%. Karin, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it.